big, big change right away as soon as you're in. So can you give us an example of some of the policies that you would start putting forward now that you have backing on this first step? As the, I mean, I'll tell you what I've been doing for the last year and a half, and that'll probably give you a pretty fair sense, and I'll pass it to Dom. Right now we have what I consider, uh, what, well, Peter Russell, Professor Emeritus of Political Science at the University of Toronto, comes with this term, false majority. It's a false majority with a minority of the public across Canada can elect the majority of the members of parliament. So I'm not going to be speaking to suggest that, you know, elect us and we'll be able to change the tech system or redress, you know, the, the what, what an effective opposition needs to do is, I think, is revitalize democracy by making sure Canadians know what's going on in the House of Commons. That's one thing, because our mainstream media ignores a lot of very important issues, and I find that one of the most important things I've been doing as a member of Parliament is being very transparent about what I'm working on and why it matters, and engaging Canadians to help me. So a very good example would be, I mean, I've done this on the omnibus budget bills, I've done this on a number of pieces of legislation where by myself, I've drawn attention to an issue way before any of the other opposition parties were paying attention. On the case of the Canada-China investment treaty, to give a good example of how one MP who's really committed to being a voice for the people who elect me, works with the general public and, and outreach to uh, uh, activist organizations. On the Canada-China investment treaty, not only did I first identify it as a threat, analyze it, read it, get it out there, do press conferences, but gradually got, and I had also backing from a number of international law experts in investment law, but at the point that I was putting out petitions and asking Canadians to help me, I also persuaded some of the NGOs to, to help. So we had 70,000 names on petitions online that I could go in the House of Commons and say, this was before I could get the other parties to pay attention. 70,000 Canadians are urging this treaty not to be ratified. It's still not ratified. Now, it could be ratified any day, so I always say that my fingers crossed. But the ability of an MP to work on what's being presented, to analyze it, and I also presented uh, 330 amendments to Bill C-38 last spring. So I, was, I actually ended up organizing all of the parties in opposition into what the media across the country said it was the first effective opposition in the House of Commons to anything Stephen Harper had done since 2006 the first effective opposition. And it isn't because there's a, a lot of me, there's, there's one of me, uh, but the, the difference, and it's not because I'm cleverer than all the other MPs, that's not the case. There's some very, there are totally wonderful MPs in all the other parties, for sure. But they're constrained by a top-down system that controls them and says, as Donald was saying, it's all about 2015. So when, when I was desperately trying to get attention to the omnibus budget bill back last spring, C-38, the number one issue that the NDP were raising was that Conrad Black was being allowed back into Canada and was his right. They had some whiz kid, some spin doctor somewhere, who said, this will help us get good numbers in the polls. But it wasn't substantively what we should have been working on. And in the same way, when I was trying to get attention to the Canada-China Investment Treaty, and you know, the first response, in the period when I was working on that, the other parties thought they're the biggest issue. And it's an important issue, I'm not denigrating it, but it isn't the only thing, and there wasn't much we could do about it in the House, was the XL beef scandal and the E. coli. So day after day after day, when I'm trying to get people's attention on a treaty that's, that's sitting in the House of Commons that we have an option to get to debate, and I couldn't get the other parties to help, because, so they're going on other things. So it's not so much that I could say that there are policy issues. I'm always raising climate change. I'm making sure we don't ignore important issues. But we don't have the power, and neither does Tom Mulcair, and neither does Bob Ray, in, in a majority conservative parliament, to actually put forward laws that we want to get passed. Although I do think my private members bill is going to pass. It's more about how do we ensure that Canadians from coast to coast see what's happening, engage on it, and try to change things in the moment right now. And I think we're doing that pretty effectively on a bunch of issues. So I'll pass the bottle for it. Obviously, I can see it as everything I did. Times two, put it in. <laughs> you, you asked what, uh, what we'll push for. I think much of what we're going to be doing is push back in the sense that the government is presenting stuff and we are actually going to have to uh, communicate with the public about what's going on and tell people what our objections to it are. So that currently, uh, 
uh, Bill C-45, this falls uh, omnibus budget bill is going through. Elizabeth has been working very effectively on the provisions, the parts of it that deal with uh, navigable waters protection, that basically our, our protection of, of waterways in Canada is being covered. But that's, that's a clear issue. There's 400 pages to this bill. And we've been working through it together. And there's aspects of this that haven't gained media attention that are really important. For example, every tourist who comes to Canada is going to, before getting on a plane now, have to uh, fill in an electronic authorization. If you're on a no-fly list, you're not going to be able to come to Canada. If you have an illness, then the minister will have discretion to uh, keep you out of the country. If you have a misdemeanor against you, every single tourist, even from those countries where you don't need a visa at present, is going to be stopped getting into, into the country. The effect on our tourist industry is going to be enormous. But this is part of a general process of dealing with uh, it's a xenophobic process, outsiders who may be a threat to us. So basically that has to be exposed. There's another bill going through, coming through uh, Parliament, dealing with uh, police regulation. Nobody really has heard about that one yet. The RCMP, uh, we know, has been involved in harassment. The government has of its own members, as well as uh, issues relating to uh, the relationship between uh, the RCMP and, and the public. Uh, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association has taken a stand against this. And because of my connections with them, I know what the stand is. I'm able to argue about that within, within Parliament. Um, so in terms of the legislation that is going through Parliament now, none of the other candidates in this election are actually addressing these questions. But we've been working on it. We know what the issues are. Uh, the other thing that I think that, uh, that we have to know is, and the thing that we will be pushing for for the next two years, is that currently, believe it or not, Mr. Harper has still got 36% approval across the country. That with Justin Trudeau coming out to, uh, as, a, as a leader, the NDP is falling in the polls and the Liberals are going up in the polls. Even if we do think like the other parties about 2015, there is an enormous danger of the Harper Conservatives winning the 2015 election while the other two parties split the opposition vote. That is a real, real danger at the moment. For the next two and a half years, we are going to be emphasizing our policy of electoral cooperation agreements. We need to get opposition parties to form an alliance to orchestrate the downfall of the government. That's what opposition attempts to do. Each of the big parties is so interested in winning, they think they can win it alone, that they've been turning down our open offer of uh, some cooperation, even at the by-election bio level, but particularly in future, in future uh, situations. We have to get them on side to form a united alliance against this government, otherwise the government will win. How do we do that? Well, you actually have to stick a firework under their backside. What is that firework? The firework is you voting for a Green Party member to show them that even the safest seat is not going to be winnable for them. If we can motivate them to take us seriously, which we can do by voting in a Green Party member, then we will have alliances, ad hoc cooperation agreements that will bring down the, uh, the, the Harper uh, administration.